Hello, hello. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's Midweek Bible Study. Uh, today we'll be continuing on our study uh, about what does a Christian look like? What are the characteristics of a Christian? And uh, we'll be continuing on and, and looking at the characteristic of love. Uh, this study uh, started a couple weeks ago when we looked at not worrying. Honestly, I was just trying to share like a, a really powerful passage that uh, had a, a, a massive impact in my life. Um, but as I was studying that week, that that line about, you know, this is how Christians live, and this is how the world lives, and there's a difference, you know, that uh, Christ says that the world is characterized by uh, worrying, and whereas the, the Christians, those who follow God, are are characterized by not worrying and instead seeking after the kingdom of God, taking that time and energy they would spend worrying and focusing on seeking after the kingdom of God and, and being near to the Lord and, and, and doing the work that he would do and uh, uh, following God's will. And so I was like, man, that that's a really interesting idea. What is the difference between the world and Christians? What should Christians look like? Um, and last week we looked at where do we get our power. So I, I think this study is going to get uh, pretty heavy, uh, you know, and, and there's going to be a lot of weight to it as we look at different characteristics um, that uh, it could get uh, pretty heavy and, and, and you can maybe feel the weight and the burden. And uh, I want to make sure we all know where we get our power from uh, because living the Christian life isn't easy. Uh, you know, this past week Tim was talking about, man, starving sin and feeding uh, our spirit. You know, man, well, where do we get the power to, to starve sin? Because the whole reason why we sin is it feels so good. That's why we do it. And, uh, and so, you know, why should I starve it? Why should I deny myself pleasure? Where do I get the strength to do that day in and day out? Or, or the whole idea of not worrying, right? Man, it's super easy on paper just to say it, but, but doing it and following it through, you know, week after week, that's tough. Well, where do we get the strength to do that? And, and that's where John 15 comes in. We get that strength from being connected to Christ. We don't get it from our own discipline. We don't get it from our own grit and, and willpower, just being strong and tough. And I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to give up. No, 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 man. We, as Christians, we can't do it. And, and, I, and I hope that through this study, maybe you'll see just how uh, lofty and, 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 and deep uh, Christian character should go. Um, and that it is tough, and it is hard, and, and in that we would realize that, man, I can't do this without you. Jesus, I need you to produce these characteristics in me, and so uh, it, was, you know, I, it was super important that we jump in, and, and we know where do Christians get their strength, and we get our strength from being connected to Christ. He is the vine, and we are the, the branches that come off of him, and if we separate ourselves from him, man, we're not going to get any nutrients. We're not going to get any energy, any desire, any power to do the things that we're called to do. And so we need to be connected to Christ. And we stay connected through Bible study and through reading, as Jesus mentioned. So this week we are looking at the characteristic of love. Christians are called to be a people of love. But before we jump into the scriptures, would you mind joining me in prayer? Father, we come before you asking that you would guide us, that you would help us in this study. Lord, would you po point out areas in our life that we could love more, that we could love better. Lord, as we look at your definitions and your characteristics of love, um, would you convict us and strengthen us and, and show us where we can do better and, uh, and help us stay connected to you that we could have the power to do better. Father, I pray that you would bless this study uh, for the glory of your kingdom, that we would grow closer and become more like Christ. Lord, I praise things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Christians are called to love. And not only love, but we're called to love universally. Let's look at Matthew 22. Matthew 22, 39. Um, so what are the greatest commandments? Jesus says, verse 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is this, that you shall love your neighbor as yourselves. Um, 
On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Man, everything is summed up if we would just love God and love our neighbors, love the people around us. Man, everything would be summed up in all the laws, all the things that you can think of. It simply is about love, for caring for one another. Uh, and we're called to love those around us and love God. Uh, but what about the people who are out to get us? What about our enemies? What about the people who want to hurt us? What about the people who have hurt us in the past? Are we called to love them? Well, let's continue to look. Matthew 5, 544. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. What? God wants me to love everybody universally? Yeah. Christians are called to have a universal love towards all people, towards God above and to all everybody around us, no exceptions, even our enemies, even those people who are out to get us, out to hurt us, out to do us harm. Um, those people were called to love. Now, why? Why in the world would God call us to such a high standard of love? Well, if we keep on reading here in Matthew 5, we see this. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who pers persecute you, so that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven. For he, he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? We are called to have a universal love towards everybody because our Heavenly Father, the one that we represent, as a universal love towards everybody. God sends the sun, the sunshine, on the good and the evil. He makes it rain, which causes things to grow and have life on the just and the unjust. God has a universal love for everybody. And we as his representatives are called to have that same kind of universal love towards all people. We're his representatives. We're the people who are down here living for God. We're out here spreading the gospel and, and, and expanding his kingdom. We're called to represent him and have a love for all people. Now that love is so much different than the world love. It's so much different than the temporary love that we see people have, you know, where uh, maybe people fall in and out of love or, or it's not the same kind of love where, man, I, I love pizza, you know, yeah, there's so many different definitions of love. So when we say love and having a Christian godly love towards all people, whether they're for us or against us, what does that look like? What, um, how, do, how, does that, how does that manifest itself? Well, we can't uh, talk about love without talking about 1 Corinthians 13, the chapter that defines what love is. First Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4. This is the definition of, of Christian love. This is the definition of, of godly love that the Lord has for all people that we're called to have and to share with everybody. It says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes in all things and endures all things. The love never ends. As the prophets, as the prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. But love endures forever. Love never ends. So I just want to point out a couple of those things. There's a lot there on that list of and that definition of what love is. Um, but the first thing really, man, love isn't selfish. You know, uh, it, it's not self-seeking. It's not, man, what do I want? What do I get? What can, what can I get out of this relationship? How can I manipulate things and, and get what I want? It's not looking after its own self. It's not trying to satisfy its own desires. But love is selfless. It is, is there for the benefit of other people. 
And so when we say we love people, we can't be looking at our own interests, our own self-desires, and, and trying to make things for ourselves. When we say we love people, and when we're challenged to, as God's people to love, it's not for uh, our own goals. You know, we don't love people for people to look back at us and go, man, they love people so much. Look how great they are. We don't love people so we can get stuff out of them. And we love people just to care about them, just to be there for them, to help them up. Uh, we love them so they can meet Jesus because that's the ultimate uh, selfless thing, right? Jesus is the greatest thing in the entire world. And if we can love people and open them up and melt their hearts that are hardened maybe by this world or, or by things that have happened to them or, you know, issues, if we can melt that with love and get them to know Christ, and how awesome is that? And so as Christians, we are called to have a love that's universal for everybody and it's called not to be selfish. You know, uh, uh, Jess and I will watch these crime shows and, and, and some of these, these criminals, they'll, they'll, they'll kidnap people and they'll be uh, terrorizing someone's life all because they love them. Oh man, I care so much about you and I, I want you in my life and, and I've done all these things for you. But everything that they've done really is for themselves. You know, they, they've got this, this, this idea, this thought that that uh, this person's supposed to love them back. They did all this stuff so they could get love back. And, and the whole reason why they did all these crimes, and maybe they, they killed people or whatever they did, they did it for themselves so that uh, that person would, would give back and, and, and love on them back. But their definition of love is so selfish. And, and, we, and it, it's funny in the show, they're like, I love you, and the person doesn't respond back, and they're just instantly angry. They're furious. They're so irritable. You know, they're not patient at all because that's not what real love is. That's human love. That's a human kind of love that uh, is, is based in just our own strength and our own desires. But the kind of love that we're called to have for all people is selfless, not self-seeking. It's not for the, our own benefit. Um, it says that love is not resentful or in other words, love doesn't keep records of wrong. And when we love people, the kind of love that we're called to have for all people, even our enemies, is the kind of love that doesn't hold their past against them. We're called to be a forgiving type of love. When we care about people, we want to help them out and better their lives and be there for them and care about them. You know, we're called to be uh, patient and kind towards them. And it means we, we forget about their past. You know, maybe we forget about the ways that they've hurt us. We forget about uh, the wrongs that they've done us. And if we forgive them with the kind of love that, that God's shown towards us, right? Man, it says that, that Christ throws our sin as far as the east is from the west. And that's how far he throws. Like when, he, when we ask for forgiveness and, and God says you are forgiven, and he throws that stuff so far. It's infinite. And that's the kind of love that we're called to have for people. As Christians, we're called to have a very uh, forgiving love that does not hold grudges. It doesn't uh, hold the past against people. But, but lets the, the past go on and that we continue to move on in love. Uh, Christ challenges us to, to forgive seven times 77, man. Just that, just that keep forgiving. You know, just a, almost an impossible number to get through that somebody would offend you that many times. But that's the kind of love we're called to have, the type of love that doesn't hold their past against him. And Christian love, uh, it is the kind of love that endures, it endures forever. You know, it's not a human love that we can fall in and out of. It's not the kind of love that uh, is based on feelings or, or what we're getting out of a relationship. No, the kind of love that we have for people, it endures forever. It loves unending. Um, it, it doesn't wane, it doesn't get weaker, and it loves, and it keeps on pouring out. That's the kind of love that we're called to have. Uh, and I know that in a fallen world, that's tough to do, because people are going to hurt us, because people are going to um, do wrong against us, and we're going to have issues. But it doesn't change. It doesn't change the call that we're called to have. It doesn't change the bar that's set by God where he loves us unending. You know, as we go through the Old Testament heroes, it's been so crazy to see the people 
mess up time and time again. We're talking hundreds of years of forgiveness, hundreds of years of God's unending love for people where he keeps coming back to them and rescuing them. He keeps disciplining them so they turn back towards him and away from evil and they know the, 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 the precious love of God once again. Man, what a picture of the kind of love that we're called to have. You know, it's, it's that kind of love that is, that is selfless, that is, that is forgiving, that's unending, that I remember that really uh, turned my heart, that God used to turn my heart towards back to him. And that's the kind of love that we're called to have towards other people. Uh, not a worldly love that's seeking out our own, uh, our own pleasure, our own desires. You know, not the kind of love that's asking everybody else, well, what can you do for me? Or what have you done for me? You know, it's not, that's not the kind of love that we're called to have. We're called to have a selfless love. We're called to have um, a love that is unending. We're called to have a love that is forgiving and, and forgets about the past and doesn't hold any records. This is the type of love that we're called to have as Christians. Um, and there's a lot in, in 1 Corinthians that I haven't gone over. And I would encourage you uh, that as you are challenged this week with looking at the characteristic of love, um, you know, how well do you love? Do you, do you love all people? Do you love all the people that are around us? Um, do you love even the people who, who treat you terribly? Do you love those who are out to get you, who are your enemies? You know, uh, do we love people in such a way that we forgive them and we move on and we don't hold it against them? Do we love in such a way that all we want to do is see their lives get better and, and see their life improve and we care about them, we're kind to them? Do we love in such a way that's unending or does, does our love have limits? You know, and, and, I, and we're humans and we're going to fall short and we're going to have issues and, and uh, we're going to fall short of this super high standard. But once again, that's why, that's why we must see Christ as our source a source of love. We must look to the cross and his unending love that pours out for us as our, as our example, as our beacon of light. That, like, that's what my love needs to look like. Um, I know that as, as if I've studied this, I've got some work to do. Uh, my love isn't up to, to God's standards and I've got a long ways to go. But the only way where I'm ever going to know that is if I study this stuff and go, man, i got some work to do. And uh, so this week, as, we're, as you're looking at your life and you're examining yourself for love and how well do you love, what does your love look like? How does it compare to the examples in Scripture? Um, you know, pray about that stuff. Ask the Lord to help you. Ask Him to point out uh, ideas and, and, where's, and areas where you can get better. Uh, I know that uh, God's been uh, communicating a lot to me about areas that, man, I could, I could love better. Um, I could treat everybody around me better, you know. I could I could have a, a better universal love um, that's not so guarded towards everybody. So uh, I've got work to do, and, uh, and I hope you join me in, in, in getting uh, these Christian characters stronger and stronger in our lives. Would you join me in prayer? Father, we come before you uh, thankful. Thankful for your example, God that you would love us so much, that you would bathe us with forgiveness, that you would be so patient and so enduring that your love for us never ends, that you saw the issue of our sin and the problems that we have and, and you wanted to be kind to us and fix that. And you gave us a solution in Christ because of your love. And Father, I pray that that kind of love would spur us on to continue to care for people and to be there for them, to love better, to love more universally, even love our enemies. Father, I pray that you would convict us as you see fit, that you would encourage us in areas that we're doing well, that we continue to latch on to you and follow you and be connected to you. Father, I pray that you would help us out in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, hey, thank you all so much for tuning in this week as we look at love. We'll see you next week.